It's now time for the Weekly with News 6 Morning Anchor, Justin Warmith. This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmith. You know, sports not being played right now. The coronavirus pandemic uh, basically suspending all sporting activities from the major league level all the way down to Little League. So this morning I wanted to bring in News 6 Sports Director Jamie Say to give us uh, some sports talk where I think we need some sports talk. So, <laughs> Jamie, I just want to start off by asking you what it's been like over the last month or so covering sports in a time like this. Well, obviously, Justin, it, it's been very different. I mean, normally in the spring we're talking NBA playoffs, we're talking Orlando City Soccer and Orlando Pride Soccer. All of this was supposed to uh, get rolling right now. So we've had to adjust with the day-to-day -day information that's coming out from basically all the leagues, from the NFL to the NBA to Major League Baseball, their updates to their fans about when maybe they can start playing again. And also, the NFL is always a wealth of uh, stories in the offseason anyway, so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have kept us busy. But this has really changed what we do because we are still focusing on local sports. So instead of going to games, we've been doing a lot of coverage in-house, reaching out to people, doing um, interviews with sports figures in our area uh, via Skype, via Zoom, virtually, you know, trying to keep tabs on what's going on. Um, UCF football has provided availabilities with head coach Josh Heupel and the quarterback Dylan Gabriel. So we're still trying to deliver the sports news the best we can. But obviously it's been different because there are no games being played. But, you know, I think all the sports fans are itching to know when things are going to come back. Nobody knows. But these leagues have been providing updates about where they're at and what their thinking is. I want to talk about those updates uh, here in a second, but I do want to kind of ask you just about high school sports when it comes to high school sports. You know, so many seniors had their seasons and, and a lot of their careers really just cut short and stopped right in the middle of it, especially those spring sports. So you guys have been trying to um, really make sure that they have a proper send off. Can you explain what you guys have been doing? Sure. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, um, at the end of March, uh, one of the athletic directors in the area, Chris Klein from East River High School, reached out to us and said, Hey, uh, have you noticed what ESPN Sports Center has been doing? They've been doing these senior night tributes. Wouldn't it be great if you did that for Central Florida athletes? And then I was like, Why didn't I think of that? So we really took that by the horns. Um, we've been talking. What I did actually um, was reach out to almost every athletic director that I could in the Central Florida area, spread out over all the counties that we cover. Um, you know, I did that in a matter of two days just to say, hey, if you have an athlete or a team that you think deserves some recognition, they're seniors, just so we can honor them because they're most likely not going to get their senior night, which is always a big highlight of the sports season they're most likely not going to be able to continue uh, throughout their season. And, you know, senior year is always the best in, in high school. So we got a tremendous response from coaches, administrators, parents, friends of athletes, recommending all these seniors um, who deserve some recognition. I think all senior athletes um, deserve some recognition. Uh, we just don't have the days uh, to recognize them all. So what I've been doing, we've been doing a feature called Senior Salute where we amass biographies and pictures of certain senior athletes or teams with a bunch of senior athletes. And then we do an interview with an athlete or two over Skype. And it's been really uplifting for me to meet these kids because their attitude, despite their spring season being taken away from them, they have such a positive attitude. And some of these teams probably would have won state championships this season. They're not going to have that chance, but they've remained positive. And one thing that's been universal is they've always thanked the people that have supported them along the way, from the coaches, their parents, teachers, and fans. And these have been great kids. We do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it's been so popular. I was initially just going to do it in April, but it's been so popular we're going to do it uh, through the rest of May, too. You know, hearing you talk about this really, it gives me chills just being someone who did play uh, a high school sport. I played baseball and, and it did mean so much. The senior year was something that everyone from the time you're 10 years old and you're starting to play with the kids that you're going to be graduating with 
uh, in high school, to know that that is the final year to play with them and to be around that camaraderie, um, I, I can, I really just, it, it's, it's inspiring to hear that, it, you know, the, the response from some of the people, it must be so difficult to, to find the team or the player to highlight every week. Is there a checklist that you've been going through to kind of going through this or, or what, it, what, how have you been making those tough decisions? It, well, it's, it's been tough because the response has been so great, but we kind of uh, have kind of gone by the motto, leave no senior behind. If somebody recommends somebody, we're going to try our hardest to squeeze them in. Now we've, we're pretty much all booked up through the end of May now with all the recommendations. I mean, the response has been so positive. So towards the end of the month, if we get more, you know, right now it's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we might include Tuesday, Thursday towards the end of next month. And then you mentioned it, Justin. I mean, you, you, you talked about your experience as an athlete and waiting for senior year and you start playing the sport with your friends when you're 10 years old and you guys are playing it all throughout your career. So it's like it's that final push. And that's what the kids bring up a lot, too, is that they've been playing with their friends for so long and they can't see it to a completion. So we give them a chance kind of to talk about what it means to them to represent their school, to represent their community and how much their teammates, friends and all the supporters have meant to them. Well, Jamie, you and Ryan have been doing such a fantastic job just highlighting that. I, it's, it's awesome to see. I, I can't wait to see more uh, down, the, down the pike. But I do. let's now talk about the Orlando Magic. And, and yes, you did mention that they would be in the middle of a playoff run right now. But uh, they're also trying to uh, do their part and, and get the word out and help out the community. Can you talk to me about some of the players and, and the organization in general and what they've been doing throughout this pandemic? Yeah, um, I've been really blessed to be able to cover the Orlando Magic since I, I got here. It's always been a dream of mine to cover the NBA, and I can't think of a better team to cover than the Orlando Magic because of how community-oriented that franchise is. So, yeah, the Magic have done so much since everything came about uh, early March, and the first people to step up was the owners, the DeVos family. They pledged $2 million to make sure the Amway Center employees that are employed by the Magic uh, were taken care of. And then Nick Vucevic, Mo Bamba, they also contributed into that fund to help the employees of the Amway Center. Next was Jonathan Isaac, who is just an incredible individual. He's the forward, young forward. Um, he is so involved with his church, Jump Ministries. He's actually a minister. So Jump Ministries has been doing a food drive to feed Orange County kids, the kids who depended on their meals coming from school. And now since school is out, you know, they might go hungry. So Jump Ministries, with Jonathan Isaac's help, has been doing this food drive. They've been feeding kids every day. Wessa Wundu, J.I.'s teammate, chipped in monetarily to help Jonathan uh, with that project. Then there's the Second Harvest Food Bank of Central Florida. The DeVos family just chipped in another $50,000 to help out that food bank. Um, the Magic team of broadcasters are doing a virtual food drive this month um, to ask for monetary donations to Second Harvest and also the Christian Service Center. So these are the broadcasters. They're my friends. They're great guys. Um, they've chipped in and they're asking Magic fans to do the same. And they've also um, issued a challenge to Magic fans, a photo challenge, submit photos and, and uh, videos. You can go on the Magic website to find out how to do it. And then the best will get uh, a free treat of a Magic game um, down the road. And then Steve Clifford, uh, the head coach, he also donated uh, money to a program that helps with uh, fiscal relief for families who have been negatively uh, impacted economically by, um, by the shutdowns that are going on. So it's been top to bottom, the Magic have really stepped out. But Justin, you being from this community, you've seen what the Magic ha have done. I mean, they donate over a million dollars to our community every single year anyway through the Orlando Magic Youth Foundation. So it's, it's not a surprise, but it's such a blessing to have a team like this in our community. They also employed me at the tender age of 16 to be a ball boy. And if they can do that, then they can do anything. Uh, we do have to take a short break. Jamie, uh, stick around. We'll have more right after this. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. 
Welcome back to The Weekly. I'm Justin Mormuth. Happy Sunday. This morning we're joined by News 6 Sports Director Jamie Say. And Jamie, before we went to break, we were talking about the great work the Orlando Magic have been doing in this community during this pandemic. Um, they would be in the middle of hopefully a, a playoff series of some yes. sort uh, if, if this pandemic had not come through. I, you know, the NBA playoffs happening right now normally. Do you think that when and if the NBA season comes back that they'll jump right into the playoffs. It's really tough to say. I think the commissioner of the NBA, Adam Silver, has done a really good job being transparent about where the NBA is at. Um, things aren't being leaked. Plans are not being leaked from his office. And whenever he's spoken publicly about the possible return of the NBA, he has said, we're not in any position to make any decisions yet. And we won't be until at least the end of April. But he also added, that doesn't necessarily mean we're ready to announce anything or move forward at the beginning of May. I just think, you know, with time being of the essence and where we are, if the NBA returns, my personal opinion, I think they go into the playoffs using those 16 teams that, that are above the line right now because... You know, this is a frightening situation. Um, it's an uncertain situation. There are teams in the NBA, as we know, that are so well out of the playoffs. What's their incentive to come back and play? You know, if it's a, if it's a case where, you know, we've heard speculation that maybe um, there are two isolated cities where the two, you know, the two conferences split up. Uh, Western Conference goes to one city, Eastern Conference goes to another city, all the NBA players are in a hotel, so it's a, a controlled environment. Um, but what's the incentive for a team like, say, the New York Knicks, who have no chance of making the playoffs, to come back, to get on planes, to travel, uh, be quarantined in these hotels, and, and then go to work? So I think, just my personal opinion, should it come back, I think they dive right into the playoffs. But um, again, Adam Silver has given no indication. There's just stories floating around. It's a really, obviously, it's a very smart league. I'm sure they're going through a lot of scenarios. They're just not ready to announce anything yet. And I think maybe beginning of May, we hear some ideas, but still there's just so much uncertainty around the country on how everything is gonna play out. You know, some commissioners have been, have been quiet about um, when they plan to open things back up, obviously waiting on word from health officials. Uh, but the PGA Tour has set some dates already. Did you find that um, surprising? And do you think that golf will be the first sport back? I think golf will be the first sport back just because the PGA did announce the plan to resume in June with no spectators. I think they're the example that others are going to follow. I see next in line, honestly, after the PGA Tour. I think NASCAR could follow suit um, because, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's not body-to-body -body contact. You can socially distance, although, you know, crews, uh, a driver's crew, are working in cl close contact. There has to be a lot of personnel at the track for emergency situations. So you are getting employees, multiple employees, at tracks. Plus, there are some states that are still shut down. Um, well, most states are, are, are still shut down. But you could see, you know, a state like Florida opening up to some of these sporting events because Governor DeSantis has left that open. Um, but yeah, I think mm -hmm. the PGA Tour will be the example that others follow. Maybe NASCAR is next. And then personally, I think the one team, the one league that follows after that uh, would be Major League Baseball because they've made it known they want to get it started. They want to play as many games as they can. I don't know if the NBA comes back this season. I don't know if they resume that, but I think Major League Baseball would be the first major pro league to get back going. Yeah, you know, the Major League Baseball, as you mentioned, they flirted with some ideas, including uh, playing a season basically, you know, in a bubble in Arizona and no fans, no outside family, no outside contact really. Uh, and basically being in quarantine for four months. And that was, uh, that was the, the speculation from Major League Baseball. And uh, of course, they're working on ideas. They're trying to come up with a solution. Uh, but a lot of people have raised, raised concerns too. It's like, okay, yes, you know, the players are of great health. 
and they're young and, and everything like that doesn't necessarily affect them. The coronavirus doesn't necessarily affect them as it would someone of an older generation. But you have to factor in managers, umpires, yeah. and people who would be part of the game, right? Yeah, and I, I mean, the thing is, it's like uh, coronavirus does not discriminate based on age. I mean, we've heard cases mm -hmm. of young people coming down with it and dying. So just because athletes are in mm -hmm. great shape and they're in their 20s, it doesn't mean something serious can't happen to them. Plus, you know, there's the threat of contagion and spreading it to other people. So, you know, it's gotta be a really controlled environment for these leagues to get back together, depending on where we are at, depending on what kind of medications, has a vaccine been discovered? I mean, because, you know, you hear that once a vaccine is discovered, it still takes a year to 14 months to get on the shelves. So, so you really have to explore that and, and be careful and screen every player, every individual, basically every day. I don't know, and, mm -hmm. and you know, it'll be interesting to see if Major League Baseball does announce, hey, we're going to play in this bubble in Arizona or we're going to split it up between Florida and Arizona and all you players have to quarantine in this hotel for this amount of time, what do the players think about that? How are they feeling? What's going through their psyche? Are they up for doing that? Are they up for leaving their families during this time to go play baseball? Um, do they feel 100% secure? So. Yeah, I don't think the age factor makes a difference in this because it could affect mm -hmm. anybody negatively, and we just don't want to take that chance. As it stands now, you know, there's a lot of optimism for the fall. Again, we, there's just so much we don't know, but there is optimism that college football and the NFL will be back. It could be setting up for a, a, a quite the fall when it comes to uh, sporting in the United States. Yeah, I... I don't know. This is my personal opinion. I just think we've heard about the second wave that could potentially come. Um, I think things are going to be a lot different. I think, um, you know, I think these leagues have to prepare for the fact they may not, they may have to play without fans if they can get back on track. If they deem it safe enough to start playing games again, maybe they don't open it up for fans uh, right away, if at all this year. Um, and it's going to really hurt college sports because, you know, a, a program like UCF, yes, they get money, they get television revenue, but they get, but it's complemented by all the revenue that, they, that comes from ticket sales and concessions and everything mm -hmm. like that. So it'll be interesting, I mean, if these leagues, if these sports start on time in the fall. Now, the NFL has said we are optimistic and it's all systems go that we are going to kick off as scheduled at the beginning of September. I'm gonna wait and see if that happens because there is just so much unknown. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's, what next week's gonna be like. We don't know what next month is gonna be like. We don't know what the next season is gonna be like, but I think it's gonna look vastly different. I think the economics of sports are going to be changed by this too. Jamie said we appreciate it, and yes, to your point, we miss sports, but <laughs> let's take it easy. Let's make sure it's a safe approach. Jamie say always a pleasure, and for more information on anything sports-related, just head to clickorlando.com sports. I'm Justin Mormuth. Hope you have a great Sunday.